So to start off about myself, I am Kashi Vishwanath. I am a technical architect at Mindtree. I have about 11 years of experience, uh, six years in Android, and close to one year on the wearable side. So that's about my myself, and let's move on. Okay, before I go here, I want to just take account of uh, people between two to eight years of experience. Okay, about 30, 40 percent. Eight plus? Okay, others, two to two, zero to two, is it? Okay. Okay, so there's a mix. Okay, fine, thank you. Okay, just to give you a, a, a overview about Mindtree, we are globally present. I'll not take a lot of time here. And we were awarded the Business Leaders Award last year. And three days before, uh, our CEO was given the best CEO of the year for mid-tier companies. It was Krishna KK, he's called KK actually. And this is our high-tech business which we work on. I'll just move across quickly. And these are the clients which we serve. Again, I'm moving at quickly. And mobility at Mindtree, what do we do? So we have about 700 plus employees working on the mobility. And some of our customers have been listed out here. Okay, I'll just cut for regarding Mindtree here. And let's go on to the actual thing. So this is my agenda for the PPT. So I'll be talking about the emergence of wearables, why wearables make sense, and how wearables are used today, and what are the sensors, what are the various sensors that go into wearables today. And we'll show you a demo, and we'll have a hands-on. The surprise continues, okay? Okay, so, this is about this is a small slide about emergence of wearables. So we are we, in this slide. What we are trying to tell you is where are we going? See, if you take the middle portion where in the technology, we are seeing that 72% of the people are having mobile phones, and the other figures have been mentioned here. And th that is where we are seeing that people are moving slowly into the digital space. So wearables make good sense here actually. So that is that key takeaway should be this from this particular slide. So whatever we do, it's basically only when we have profits, revenues, money, right? So even when wearables are coming into picture, companies adopt wearable technology only if they say, see money in it, right? So as per one of the researchers, it says about by 2018, the revenues from wearable devices will be about $30 billion. Is it good enough to take wearables? Do you think? Okay. See, currently there might be only limited number of wearables. So in this you can see a smartwatch, a glass, and Fitbits, or a health kits. But more wearables will be coming in for sure. And we have a counter on the top, right? An Epson is one of the wearable devices which have been there. OK, now we, every time we talk of something new, we need to understand how can it continue to grow, right? So the triangle here depicts exactly what should be done to make the wearable successful, okay? So it says it should be a device, if a device is said to be to have connected intimacy, then it can be a successful wearable device. Then it must be tailor-made ecosystem. For example, social networking was a huge hit. Why? Because they had the underlying ecosystem and people got connected very easily to it. So if the wearables can connect personally to a human being, then I'm sure wearables would be a very huge hit. And the third reason it says, it's a co-evolved possibility. That means a person is becoming a computer by himself because he's wearing a lot of gadgets on him and he's, he itself is a smart person now. Not in terms of brain, but in terms of gadgets he's wearing, okay? Okay, why wearables are preferred or why wearables can be preferred over the other digital mediums? We're saying wearables are mostly hands-free. For example, you take Google Glasses, they are totally hands-free. You have a smart watches, you can just uh, communicate it through voices itself. You don't, you don't need to interact it through your fingers. So but basically we are saying it is hands-free, and accessibility to biometric information becomes easier, then augmented reality becomes possible in terms of wearables, and when you have something wearing on you, it is very personalized to one, right? So these are some of the advantages of wearables over traditional channels. Okay, the next important thing we'll have to ask is, where wearables are used today, right? We might have heard about wearables, but where are these used? 
that's a very important question to answer. It might be used in a various places, but what I have chosen is, I have chosen a banking area. So, that be, be, because everything is related to money and I thought, let's take a banking use case, so that it will be easier to tell where variables fit into banking use case. Okay, to start off with, these are all existing applications in the market. Okay, this is not some fantasy or saying it will come down the line, but these are the existing things that are already in the market. Okay, so in the Spain we have one company which through smartwatches they have their stocks and equity sharing. Then Westpac has has a balance availability on their smartwatches, and there's a U.S. bank uh, which does fraud receive alerts and other types of information on smartwatches actually. Moving on, on the glass we have a private bank in Ukraine which does glass banking and that is one of the snapshots of that and we have a MJ Bale in Japan they have a contactless chip on their collars in their shirts and it's a contactless payment system so that is one of in Japan moving on again Willoughby Financial has a glass app wherein they can do payments using their app which is a glass app and Barclays back has something to do with fitness. Moving on, we have Caxia Bank, which will show you 24 by 7 video conferences, as well as you have a ATM locations using a glass. And this is a very interesting use case, Virgin Atlantic. So what they do with the glasses, you can do a face recognition of a person. They say it's working, I'm not very sure of this. When a high profile customer comes in, or a first class customer walks into the airport, they just scan the person through their face and they are able to recognize the person and meet him by name. For example, he walks into me and I am your I am the airport authorities or a airport person. I just say, hello, how are you? I say him by name. So that is what has been developed by Virgin Atlantica. That's what they say. Okay. Another one more interesting use case is, how about your belts? The belts which you are wearing will control your credit limits. So the it, in Blanco, what it does is, they have something called as a smart belt. Okay, what with this belt, if you tighten your belt, that means your credit limit is reduced. If you loosen your belt, your credit limit is increased. So this is one of the variable use cases that they brought out. And Fujitsu has something to do with gesturing in terms of card readers and all. Okay, so that's about some existing use cases which we have. So, Generally variables with variables, there is fitness also coming into picture nowadays. They don't treat separately fitness kits and variables separately now. They are getting combined into one space. So it's very important to understand what are the various sensors that are available in variables. Okay, the first thing everybody knows is pedometer, accelerometer, which we regularly use in our Android code itself. And we have the optical ray heart rate monitors and gyroscopes. Then magnetometers and the barotometers and barometers and ambient temperature sensors. So all these are the ones which can go into a, into, into a wearable device actually. So they give us intelligence actually. Okay, so that's about what can be doing. So let's, I think we have completed our 15 minutes time. So let's start showing you a demo, exact demo. Just give me a moment. Okay. So before I show you the actual glass, this is a pictorial representation of the glass. So what it says, it has a camera, it has a CPU which is on the side, it has a prism which is nothing but a display, it has a speaker and it has a boat conduction headset. A bone conduction headset is nothing but it, it directly triggers into your brain. The frequency waves directly triggers into your bone and you'll be able to hear it. So that is what it has. So this is about some features about the glass. However, I would like to show you the exact working of the glass like this with one of the use cases. Okay, so this is the glass I have. So what I'm doing is, I'm screen casting. I'm screen casting my Google Glass onto my mobile and my mobile has been displayed there. 
So this feature is by default available in the My Glass app, which is a part of your Play Store app. Okay, the, this is completely hands-free, and I'll I'll just operate it by voice commands, and I will show you a use case here. Okay, Glass, start internet banking. Okay, Glass. Okay, Glass. Show account balance. Sorry. Okay, Glass. Start internet banking. Okay, Glass. Login. Okay, Glass. Show account balance. Okay, Glass. Show last transaction. Okay, Glass. Log out. So this is one use case which is a banking use case which can be developed on a glass. So this is just a prototype, but at Pinetree we are working on two, with two customers to develop a banking application on a glass. Okay, the other best thing use case could be on something like this. I have a QR code scanner here, I have a QR code here, so you can use your glass to do a QR code scanning. So this can be applicable to a variety of industries, name whichever you want. It can be used in the airport, can be used in your airport, it can be used in your manufacturing industries, or you want to scan a barcode or a QR code, this can be used very easily. So I'm just launching the barcode scanner. So that is my barcode. Sorry, QR code. And I'm able to get the scanning of the UR code done. So this use case can work in any industry you want. And it goes to this. I tap on it and it goes, it takes me to wherever the QR code points to. Okay, that's okay. I think we have a low bandwidth of internet. Anyhow, it's just going to the YouTube URL. We'll just continue. Okay, the next use case I would like to show you is on a watch. So before he sets it up, any particular questions at this point of time before we show you a demo on a watch? Glass SDK is not downloadable in India. My glass was not available until about one and a half months time, but now it's available. Now it's available? Yes, because in eBay also they are selling it for 1.3 lakhs. The device, actual device is being sold for 1.3 lakhs now. Right. No, glass is available on Indian Play Store also. Yes. Currently, they do not have much sensors. They just have a swipe sensor currently. And when I talk about glasses, the glass is still in what you call as an explorer program. They are not even into a developer program right now. They are just into an explorer mode. So they are just given out the devices for people to explore to identify what are the various problems that can occur in the society because of a glass and after that they may go into production phase the next thing once they take into inputs all of these <laughs> see right now what i understand is with respect to glasses especially this is only particular to glasses there is a relate something related to security issue because it has only a one-time authentication at installation. After that, if anybody steals your device, it's easy to do. But you can do a remote uninstallation of your apps also. So that security is also there. But still, there's a little bit hesitancy because Google has to come out with the right login procedures and some other authentication mechanisms in terms of Glass. Since it's an Explorer version, I think it is fine as of now. But when they get into a real commercial use case, I think all these things have to be addressed actually. No, not required. Good question he asked. He's asking how is remote uninstallation possible? See, most of the apps on the glass are installed through your mobile phone only. 
It's, it's we who, who know, we don't install the apps onto the glass. We say, I want this app, and Google pushes it onto your glasses. And if I say, uh, switch off the app on my, on my glass, Google uninstalls it for you. Wi-Fi. You have a Wi-Fi connectivity directly on the glass, and you can have a, uh, you, you can pair it with your phones, and it still works. And the internet connectivity of the phone translates to your glass also. It has a device ID. <coughs> it's just Bluetooth pairing. There's no Wi-Fi direct at all. You can pair your glass using a Bluetooth to your phone. And the internet of your phone can be utilized on the glass also. Or your, wife, or your glass can directly connect to a Wi-Fi network also. That is also possible. Okay, the next use case I would like to show you is about a smartwatch. Sorry? Yes, a glass can work as a standalone device. Right. Okay, so whatever you are seeing now is a screen of the smartwatch. Okay, so we have developed a banking use case for an Indian customer and we have asked the customer permission to show this and so we are showing you this here. So I just tap on the device or better is like this. I will not even touch the device, okay? I will just say Okay, Google, start balance. Sorry, again. Start balance. So I'm just using my voice command here. If the internet connectivity is fine, I should, this is a live balance which we are fetching for you actually, yeah. And this is a live balance of one of the account. And this is on a smartwatch and it was developed by Mindtree in conjunction with ING. So I can use it only through my voice commands and nothing else is required. There are a lot of other use cases also because of paucity of time. I would stop here and we can continue with the workshop. Then we can, if we time permits, we can see them later. Just a moment. Yeah, on a glass, it's almost 95% accurate. But a watch is a little bit lacking. About 75% I can say. But on a glass, it's very good. Voice recognition is very nice. Okay, so we are, we are done with this. Okay, what was the next topic? Some surprise was there, right? Okay, let's see what is it. Hands on. Okay, fine. I have a smartwatch. Okay, I have a phone. Okay, so what? Fine, okay. Slow now. Okay, I have a smartwatch here and my phone is connected there. This is a surprise. What was this? So I'm generating a fake call by triggering a message from my watch to the phone there. So how many of you are faced in an uncomfortable situation where you thought, oh, okay, I should have a call and I should run away from here, right? So this is the app for them. So you just do it like this, wear it, just do it like this, you get a fake call, you can go away. <laughs> so you want to do a hands-on for this? Yes. So if you just have the prerequisites and one Android phone with 4.3, we can do this use case. 
You want to try? You want to t do it again? Yes, this is an app which we have built especially for Droid Call. Okay, let's see what the PPT says. Okay, I have the app. The user clicks on it, and there's some magic which is happening, and you have the phone call. So this is what you saw on live. So are we ready to do this? Shall we do a hands-on on this? Okay. So the magic part is what we have to work. So before we start off, what I want to tell you is, if you're just an Android developer, that's enough. You need not learn anything new. If you have just worked on Android phones, that's enough, but you have some additional classes which you'll have to work with uh, with variables, that's it. Apart from that, there's nothing else which is required. <coughs> An Android developer who knows how to work with Eclipse is more than sufficient to develop this app. Okay, shall we go ahead? Okay. So for whoever has the resources folder which was shared across to the USB, there's a step-by-step -step instruction so I'll, I'll also follow that because it will be easier to explain more rather than typing and coding. So I'll copy and paste code and I'll start explaining you more. That will be easier actually. So I'm opening the Eclipse, fresh Eclipse, there's nothing in it. So you can do the same. I would request you guys to follow me and please do it as I'm doing because in case you go wrong, it will be easier for my teammates to help you guys. If you do something different, then we'll have to sit with and debug, but please follow the instructions, whatever we give you, so that it will be easier for us to help you out. And two persons from my, my colleagues, one is Amit there and one is Kavya here, will be assisting you during the workshop in case you are stuck somewhere. Okay, are we good to start coding or do you want only demos? Shall we do some coding? Okay. Okay, so there's a step-by-step -step guide also which we have created for you and it has been put in the resources folder. So this is exactly the same steps I'll follow you for you. So I'm saying open Eclipse and create a new workspace. Create a new project and name the project as fake call mobile and create the package name as com example fake call. Okay, so this is what I'll exactly do now. So I'm right clicking on my properties saying new Android application project and I'm saying fake call mobile and I said the package name should be fake call. I would like to stress something very important here is the package name is very very important when you have to work with variables. When you create an app for a mobile phone, okay, before that I'll tell you something else. I forgot to tell you guys. Okay, so this is what we have, right? This is what we are trying to build now, correct? So what all we need to build? One app on the mobile side, okay, point number one. One app on the mobile side, right? And there's one app on the variable side, two, and this magic part, three. So we have to do three things totally. One is a mobile application which will, which will run on your mobile. Second will be an app for the variable. And when you shake or when you click on the app, you should get a communication, right? So that is one, third portion. So we have to do three, three things here and we'll do the same here. Okay, the first thing we are doing is developing the mobile application. Okay, I was talking about uh, the package name. See, when you, when you have to send a message from your variable to your phone, only if they are built with the same package names, Google will be able to transport the messages from your variable to your phone. Otherwise, it will not be able to do. So this is a very important learning. It's not documented anywhere. This we are saying you by experience. Okay? So if you want to develop apps which is, consists of variables, make sure that the project which you build for variable and the project which you use for your mobile app should have the same package name. This is very, very important. Okay, I have it. And I'm saying I'll all select 4.4 because that's the only SDK I have right now. And I'll say next. I'll go ahead. 
because this is nothing new to all of us. So I'm just going quickly here. I'll just rename this to fake call activity. And I say finish. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yes, with Android Studio, when you create a project, you get a workspace within the project itself for the variable as well as the mobile part. So if you use uh, Studio, you need not worry about the package name at all, because Studio takes care of itself. Okay, so what was my next step? So under the XML file, under layouts, have this thing, make the background as zero, okay? So I'll do the same thing. I'll go to this particular file, which is my XML file, and I'll make Android colon background as zero. I'm just making it as a black, nothing else. The reason you'll know why, shortly. Okay, so what was there on my mobile app? A fake call screen, right? So in the resources folder which I have given it to you, there is a PNG file which we have given it to you. So you can use a PNG file and set the and set the background as a PNG file here. So what do I do here? Let's see the steps also. So we are saying add full screen option, we'll do this. Okay, before that, in the drawable folder, copy the call.png and add an image view to the XML file and set the image file with call.png file. That's what I'm doing right now. So this file is there. And in my resources folder, I have this call.png. I'll just copy this from here and I'll place it one of my drawable folders. Fine. And the next thing I said in my document was take an image view, drop it here, and set this. Are we good until here? Are we good? No response? No response is not good for me. Yeah, that's how your fake call should be, right? It should not do anything. It should not be visible to you at all. Okay? We'll guys continue with the next step. So what I have said is, add a full screen option to this activity because we don't want the action bar or the some default title bar to be there. So this is the code for that. I'm just copying this code, and this is nothing new to Android developers. I'll just go into my class file, and I'll just put it before set content view, which is very important. And you organize your imports, and solve all the error compilation errors, and we are done. <coughs> Correct? Right? So have we done the application side? Mobile application is done? Okay. Let's see if it is done. Very good. Okay, let's continue. So we are saying when this fake call is activated, you need a ringtone also, right? And we should not be giving a default, we should not give some ringtone which is there in my mobile. Whatever has been set as a default ringtone in your system, that's what we want to try, right? So for that, this is the steps which we have written for you. So we are saying declare a class variable as below. So I'm just doing the same. So I'm just putting this class variable here and solve your, sorry, solve your build errors. I'm just importing it and I'm going to the next step which says override the on resume and on pause to the activity and add this particular code. Do we understand why we are putting it into on resume and on pause? Since we are on all Android developers, I don't think we need to tell you this. So we'll just take this and but if anybody has a doubt, I can clarify. Okay? So we say override the on resume and on pause. So I'm overriding on resume. On pause. And I'll take this code which is related to on, on resume. and I'll put it in here. 
and organize your imports. So what is basically doing here is, whenever the screen cut, becomes active, pick up the default ringtone that is a part of your Android system and start playing it. That is what this code is doing, nothing else. Okay? And if somebody presses a back button, we should respond to it, right? So we should stop the ringtone also. So for that we have a next piece of code which says ringtone.stop. And where should I put it? On resume, so we, sorry, on pause. We all know why we should put it in on pause. Activity life cycle. Okay? Okay, so with this are we done with the mobile side application? Are we done? Anything pending, do you guys think? Okay, we should be listening to some watch uh, from the message from the watch, right? Okay, we'll, we'll just keep that for a moment. A little more, okay. <clears throat> Is it good? Is this fine? Okay, so we'll continue to follow the steps here. So what we'll do here is, we have arrived at a logical point here. A mobile app is ready at a logical point, considering the point number one, point number two, and point number three, point number one is done here, right? So let's go on to the point number two, which we said we need to have a wearable app, correct? Okay, these are the steps for developing a wearable application. What I have written is, create a new project by name fake call where have the same package name as a mobile app. This is a very important step. Let's do that. So I'm just minimizing this and I'll close all of these so that I'm not confused. And I'll say new Android application project fake call where. Okay? And we said we need to keep the same package name. And we remember we used com example fake call. So I'm using the same here. Very, very important step. This is if you're working with Eclipse. Okay? So, and especially here, you have to select your minimum SDK, target SDK, compile version SDK with Android 4.4W only. Because this is an app which will directly run on your smartwatch and the smartwatch is built with Android 4.4W. So this, especially, you'll have to work with 4.4W only. So I'm selecting 4.4w all the way and I'm selecting the theme as none. I'll just go ahead, create the activity, I'll just say okay and I say finish. I've just created a project with the variable. Okay, and my next step says remove the theme in a manifest file. Why? So there's an app theme. This theme is not applicable to wearable devices actually. So there's a small bug in their SDK also. So we are just removing this just to solve that problem. Okay? Okay, our sample application for, or if I say a hello world application for where is ready, right? Do we test it now? Is it time to test? Let's to see a hello world working or not. We'll, that's a later. We're just checking if my hello world application on a wear is working or not. And that's what we do always, right? Because this is our first application on a wearable device. Right, okay? Does everybody have smartwatches? Please take it out and start testing. Do we have? No, right? So, Google has helped us here. We have an emulator. So, let's see how to create an emulator. You all know, but it's only that our target will be 4.4W here. There's nothing new about that. So if I say Windows, Android Virtual Device Manager, and I create a new AVD with 4.4W2 as a emulator version, right? So you can create an emulator and you can start your emulators. Okay, I'll just give you about 30 to 45 seconds to do this job, and I've already done this. Am I going fast? <laughs> yeah, please. Very good question. Okay, so the question is, 
from one of our friends is you showed a banking app and we had a balance on our smartwatch. Suppose in case it is lost, what happens? Okay, first and the foremost question is, answer is like this, a smartwatch is a companion app to your phone. Only when they are paired together and where we are in the Bluetooth range, they work. If you go out of your Bluetooth range, your smartwatch is, has nothing to do, it's not smart at all. It's just a watch that time. That is one point. Second point what we have done is, when the user wants to access a balance, he has to authorize the device first. <coughs> That's the first step we have created in this app. So only if it has been authorized, the balance will be shown into that particular app, otherwise it will not be shown. Correct. Device, device, mobile app need not be in the login state at all. But for the first time, it should have just authorized this watch. That's it. Saying this watch is applicable to be shown the balance. So there is no login or anything. No. See, just showing a balance will not affect you much, right? If you have some transaction and all, what we are trying to do is, you can have an OTP coming into picture. Suppose we develop this, continue this developing this app, and we want to have a fund transfer using a smartwatch. At that time, when the fund transfer is initiated, what we can do is we can generate an OTP from the bank servers, and it lands on the mobile, and use the, mobile, use the OTP to type in the password, and then only authorize the request. That's how security can be taken care of with wearables. <coughs> Okay, if anybody wants to run this app which we created, please go ahead and do it. Okay, so what our friend is asking us is, we have developed this fake call app, you just move like this, so you keep getting a lot of fake calls every time, because you are done. The, this is done just for entertainment and learning. You can calibrate or you can write code such that only by particular gestures or only by some particular hand movements, you should be able to generate a fake call. This was done just as a fun element in the DroidCon. That answers? Sorry? <laughs> Did everybody hear that? Okay, secret. <laughs> okay. So we have the app ready, or a hello world app ready on the wearable, right? Okay. Now when I tap on this app, a message has to be communicated to the mobile side, correct? Then only the mobile will be able to activate the fake screen and then it will be able to do right. Okay, now the question is, how does the wearable app communicate to the mobile app? It's possible by only one way, by Google Play services. Google Play services is an intermediary library which communicates whatever message you want from the wearable device to a mobile device. So, See, Bluetooth, you'll have to work with the hardware or you'll have to work with the pairing and everything. Because of that, there's already predefined libraries which are given you and predefined APIs which are there for you to, for your our benefit only it's been given. No. Fake Android Google Play services is a library which resides on your mobile and your wearable platform by default. It doesn't require internet connectivity. Correct. They would do all the hard hard work for us. The final transfer is only to Bluetooth, but all the hard work will be done by them. We just have an API. I'm Aram Sel. I'll just use an API and I'm done. Why should I worry about working at the Bluetooth level? <clears throat> okay, so now we need if you want to communicate something from the wearable to the mobile, I need a Google Play services. So to have access to the Google Play services, I need to import their libraries and have a handle to Google Play services. So that is what I'll do right now. And the next step says the same thing. It says, we'll just uh, ignore this for the moment. We'll come back to this. We'll just ignore this. We say import Google Play services library project and associate it with the library in the Wear application, right? Okay, so I'm importing my Android Google, Google Play project. I'm saying browse. I'll just point to the place where I have the library. Yeah. 
it's in Google Play Services is here, and my library project is here, right? This is nothing new to any of us, so I'm just doing it quickly, okay? And I just say copy projects into workspace, because referencing will become easy, and I'll say finish, right? Okay, my project is imported, and I said my project, wearable project should have access to this. So what do I do? I say properties, Android, and add it to my project. Again, this is nothing new to us, right? Now, I have the library reference in my project. Next step, create a class variable in the activity because we need to access their client. So I'm taking this. So I'm putting this here because this is my class variable and solve all your uh, import problems. And the next thing is we have to connect to Google Play services actually. Before you transfer any message from the wearable to a phone, you have to connect to their services and only when you are connect, you can able to transfer the images actually or transfer the message. So this is a small function to do a connection for me. So I'll just take this, copy and paste there. So if you, ha you have the code, you can do the same. <coughs> and solve all your compilation errors. So I'll say let a main activity implement collection callbacks. I think I have few more errors. I'll solve them. Still more errors. Add unimplemented methods. And all my errors are done. Right? Okay, next step. <coughs> so we solved all the compilation errors, then we are saying override the start method and call the connect to play services from on start. So what I'll do here is I'll say on start and I'll call this particular method from the on start. Fine? Okay, moving on, next step. Okay, the next step is something very important. It says, declare a class variable which indicate the shared path between the mobile and the wear. I'll tell you what exactly is this. Before that, I'll just quote this. Okay, in your mobile phone, there might be a lot of applications which is accessing Google Play services, right? So how does the platform know from where I should transfer to whom, right? So what they have, what Google has done is this, they have given us something called as a shared path. You can declare it like this as a variable name and whoever has this access to this variable or whoever knows how to access this variable will only be able to read that message, okay? So we will see how we can use it further. So I just declared it right now here. <coughs> Yeah, that syntax is exactly as it is. You have to follow the same. Okay, I have connected to Google Play services now. Now my role is to send a message, right? So I have written a small code snippet to send a message. This code is directly picked up from developer.google.com Android, uh, where? It's there directly in the examples. The same code I'm using here actually. Okay, so I'm using this method. Solve all your compilation errors. And I'm done. Okay, so what actually this is doing is, since we are copying and pasting code, I thought if I copy and paste, I can give you more explanation. That is why I'm copying and pasting code. So what exactly this is doing is, it is identifying what are the different nodes or the other devices which are connected to you. Okay, then it will send messages to all of them. So that's what this code is doing. See, currently it's only one. A smartwatch can connect only to one of the, one of the phones, but going down the line, 
you have Android Auto coming into picture, Android TV is coming into picture. So these are all external nodes for an Android platform. So keeping into mind that they have done this. <coughs> Correct, one device at a time. So this, what this code is doing is, in a background thread, to all the connected nodes, it is just sending a message. It is not doing anything else. Okay, did we call this method yet? No. Okay, where should we call this method? We are saying call this method from on connected. When I have access to, when I try to do a Google Play services dot connect, I get a on connected callback. So that means I have access to Google Play now. So only in the on connect, I should be able to send a message to it, right? So this is what we say here. So I'll say send message to node. I'll call it exactly from on connected. So where is my on connected? My on connected is here. I'll just copy and paste this code, which is sending my message. A message can be anything. It can be a string or you want to send anything. It's left to you. I've given it as fake call. Okay. Okay, next step. Now we are saying if this is executes properly, the message has been sent from the where from the mobile from the wearable app to the mobile app. That's what we say. Okay. And when you, one more important thing is when you are using a wearable app, this metadata tag becomes very important. That's what Google says. It's a predefined thing, sort of things. So they say use this metadata, take this exactly. This is also from the documentation from developer side. This is nothing which I have done. So I take this and put it in the manifest file, but within the application tag. This is also very important. Okay. So we are saying we are, this app uses Google Play services. That is what we are trying to tell by this tag, nothing else. Okay. So now this app is ready, right? Part number two is ready. We had three parts. On connected will get when you when you resolved all your errors. When you resolved all your compilation errors, on connected came out automatically. No. Shared path is just a string variable. But when I do a connection callbacks. Okay. In the code where I'm sending my message. When I'm sending my message to all the nodes which are connected to me, that is where I use the shared path. Okay, next step. We say run the app and it should be working fine now. We'll do it later. Okay, part number one was done. Part number two was done. What was pending now? The magic portion, right? Where we said you should be listening. The mobile app should be listening for the message that is being sent. Okay, now how can the mobile app get the message? Should it be connected to Google Play services again? Yes, right? Okay. Uh, and none of the app will be in the active state, right? So what should I do? Should I use a service? Should I make a service and make it do this? Right? Should, should I do that? Okay. For this, what Android has done with respect to wearable is, they have created a new service which is called as wearable listener service. Okay? So it's a built-in functionality, but it's exactly a service, but it is somewhat, co it is compatible with your wearable things. So they have something, uh, already a class which is called as wearable listener service, and we'll use that. Yes, it's, a, it's, it's from the play, Google Play services actually. <clears throat> right? It's an Android service. So Android takes care of the performance. I am not bothered. If I write my service, I should be bothered. It's an Android service. Because I am extending their class. They take care of that. Okay? So we are going back to mobile application now. So this is again the steps for mobile application. I'll just close all these so that we are not confused.
And we said we need access to Google Play services here also, right? So this is the step I'm saying. Create a Google Play reference to the mobile application also and create a new class called fake call service. So first step I'll do is, even for the mobile application, I will create a reference as Google Play as a reference and I'll add this. And the second step that was mentioned in the document was, create a new class which is called as fake call service. And finish this. And the next step we have it says, have the class extend wearable listener service. So there is a service that is coming by default and we are using this. So I'll do the same. I'll say extends wearable listener service. Fine. Next step. <clears throat> Again we have to have access to Google Play, right? This is nothing new. So from the mobile application also I need to have access to Google Play. So I'll just follow the same step which we did earlier. So I will override the on create method. Okay, then the next step will be have this variable declared to access the Google Play services, solve all your compilation errors and write this function, it's the same function to connect to Google Play services. I'm doing this fast because we have already done this earlier and solve all your compilation errors. Okay, I solved all of them. Do I have more? Yes. And I'll say do uh, add unimplemented methods. And I'm done. Okay, and the next step says solve all your compile issues which I done. Then it says connect to play services should be called from on create. Yes, I'm doing it. Okay, the next step talks about having the shared variable. So <clears throat> the variable sent a message through a shared variable, right? So if I have to access it also, it's good to access through only that variable. I should not be listening to for any other variable. So we'll use the same uh, path name to get that variable actually. You'll see how we'll use it. So I'll declare this here. And my next step is this. This is again very important. So what happens is, whenever a message has to be delivered from a variable app to a mobile app, there is a callback function which is there as a part of your variable listener service, which is called on message received. So if you implement this callback in your class, then if you have a message, it will be delivered to this particular function. So I am just overriding the on message received here. Okay, I override this method. Then this is the function which I want to do. What I want to do on receiving the message? If I receive a message from a wearable device, what should I do? I should activate my app, right? I should activate the fake call app. So that is what this code is doing. And solve all your compilation errors. Right? I'm just activating that fake caller, nothing else. I receive a message from a variable, a callback will be called to me and what I do in that callback is just instantiate the activity, nothing else I do. Right? Any questions? It's left to you, it's a design issue which you are talking right now. You are asking me a design issue. It's left to you how do you want to transfer data from your variable to your thing. You want to have the same variable and have identifier and then do it or, be, or because you know the sequence in which you will send on from the variable to the mobile, you can follow the same sequence on your phone also. Otherwise if you think I need different different variables, it's left to you. Okay, and the next step is we have added a new service. So add the service into your manifest file, very very important. And there's one more important thing in this, I'll talk about it in a while.
Okay, I've just added the service and in my intent filter, you can see something called as a bind listener. So this answers your question of asking, why will the service be running always? So what exactly this is doing is, only when your watch and the phone are paired, this service will be active. Otherwise it will not be active. So whenever there's a pairing between a phone as well as a wearable, there's a broadcast that is being sent to the Android system. That is a broadcast, com, Google, Android, GMS, wearable, bind listener. And since it's a broadcast, this intent filter understands that broadcast and then the service becomes active. And you disconnect, your service is also gone. You disconnect meaning if you unpair your watch from the uh, mobile device, then th the service also doesn't do anything else. It will get killed by itself. So only when your phone and the wearable device have been paired, this service will become active. Okay, and the next step we are saying, if you are using Google Play services, you should have this in your manifest file, and I'm doing the same. Done? Okay, now our app is completely ready. You can test it out, and it should work straight up. Okay, and the next part of the code, what we have written is, <coughs> Most of the time your mobile device will be in the inactive state and the screen will not be on, right? So, and when a message is received from a wearable device, you should activate your screen also. So this is the code which helps you to do that. So that's what we are adding at the end. So we are saying, add the following code in the on resume of the mobile app. This is required to wake up the device in case the screen is off. So if I take this code and put it in my mobile app, mobile app in the fake call activity in my on resume and solve all my compilation errors and put it for window done so now your entire app is ready <coughs> your mobile will be in this state most of the time right your mobile will be in this time this state most of the time Right? This is the state it will be there. So when the variable you do it like this and you send a message, if this is not active, it's not a call which is coming in, right? It's a fake call which we are generating. Only when you have an incoming call, then the processor boots, then the processor gets, takes the power, then the, your CPU lights up and everything happens. Fake, if fake call activity has to be invoked, you have to unlock your screen and then do it. Then your activity will run. But if you want by default to happen, you have to keep the screens on. So only when you receive a message, activate the screen by using this code and then your fake call comes up by default. Okay? <coughs> and you test this. I'll just show you again. Okay, so this is the state of my screen, right? If I didn't add that window related code, if I do this, I'll not get this at all. Do I have a, could I put the build? Okay, it's not paired. This is not paired. I'll repair it and we can do it. How? This is with the device I'm doing. And one more thing, we are not doing this portion in the activity because, yeah, now it's fine. Right? This is your orientation handling, that's it, nothing else. If you do this, it's an orientation change. You need to keep listening to your orientation in your mobile or in your uh, mobile phone. Sorry, on the wearable, you should keep listening to the orientation changes. And in case there are some orientation changes, you then send a message. That's what I've done. But currently, in what we have done is, just on the click of the app, it goes. But if you have to build in this feature, you have to use the orientation thing. Orientation, I'm sure most of us would work on, and we can do it as an exercise for you guys. Okay? Okay, so that's it from my side, which I had to show you a hands on demo with some demo on use cases. Now I'm open for questions. Okay. 
Okay, now I'll tell you this. If you don't use the shared path, where exactly did I use the shared path, we'll see. Where did the shared path get used? If a message has been delivered to, to the callback, okay, and I'm checking in my code, if it is my shared path only, then I need to activate. So what, what does this mean is, irrespective of whether whosoever message it is, all the messages which are broadcasted in the system will land into on message received. So you have to filter it out and do it for your action, that is why this is there. Same. Shared path is the same. That's the same variable name. See, this is a string variable name which we have. See here. That's just just a message. It was not required at all. Nothing required. This is the only important thing. If you have a shared path, that's more than enough. Which one? <clears throat> okay. When you have to communicate from a variable to your thing. It's like having a shared memory across these two <laughs> devices. So let's consider this as a shared memory. This is a shared memory between your devices in terms of Google Play services. No, that was just a message passing mechanism. See, instead of fake call, see, it might be a fake call here. I would write another function and name it as send SMS. So then in my code, when I receive a message, I can check if it is a fake call, get the fake call screen. Otherwise, if it is a send message, send SMS. So I could use that variable there. You, okay, I'll, I'll put it again. This shared path is for the Android platform to share messages between you both. That message which we have given fake underscore call was a message from your application, from your where application to your uh, mobile application to differentiate the use cases. Sorry? Correct, you can have several such messages. You can say send message to device using fake call. One more can be send a message using call as SMS. Then in your function, you can decide what you have to do based on these two functions. Any question? Yeah. Currently, I think it's about, uh, there's no limit? Yeah. So you have the answer. <laughs> Sorry? You want to communicate between two wearable apps? Yes. Yes, any number of wearable apps can be communicated. No, he's saying apps. He's talking of apps. He's saying if I, in a wearable device, I have two apps, can the two apps communicate to a mobile phone? Yes, possible. That is why the shared path is there. The shared path helps you there. No, it's a shared path like this. You need to send a message, it's not intent call. Correct. So this shared path is like a global namespace? Correct. It's like a global namespace in Google Play services to have access from the wearable side as well as the mobile side. So, so the natural question that comes there is, so earlier you mentioned that the same application name should be there on both sides. Package name. Package name, okay. So, so if I have a different package name. It will not be transmitting your messages. It will not. get bind. No. See, it's like internally it is AIDL. Okay. Your package, let's think your package name as your process. If both of them are running in your same process, you will be able to transmit or exchange data between each other. If your package names are different on the mobile side and the variable side, there are two different processes and we have a Linux sandboxing here. So these cannot exchange the messages. That is why we are saying if you are developing variable applications and a mobile application, have the same package name. Expose meaning, it, see this is a shared path variable name which we are telling Google Play services to reach out to us. No, if there is an intent and I would like to expose a particular action, no. That means I want to, like, let's say, a mail app, and I say share, all the apps will get open. So I'm talking, is that no. possible? No, that's not possible. I think there's a blob also you can do. 
There's a blob message also you can send across wearables, from wearables to mobile phones. So you take pictures and you can transfer everything. Perfect, correct. Package name guarantees that this process which is sending and the receiving would be the same, which will be running in the same process. On, and only they'll be able to share data between each other. The if statement which we have mentioned in on receive is to differentiate between the various use cases which you want to develop. Correct. You have to give a variable to a shared path, right? You're saying to Google Play services telling that this is my shared path variable name, you reserve space for it. And you have to refer to that variable path, right? Okay, you say int c is equal to 10. Why not int, int is equal to 10? You need a variable name to reference 10, right? So that is what this is. It's a variable name to access your shared location. We can, we can, we can talk to you again. Okay, any other further questions? That's what I said. We didn't do the gesture in this particular tutorial. If you want to do a gesture, you just have to listen for orientations on your variables and you'll have to write code for that. Which will take a long time again for us now. That's why I'm not doing it. We'll have to leave by 3.45, right? So again. Yes. Yeah, we can test with our emulators also actually. So this is, there's a procedure to test the emulator and rather than me showing you, I'll show you a developer documentation. <laughs> Yeah, so this is your steps to do working on the emulator and a mobile phone. These are your steps. Start your emulator, then in your command prompt execute that adb-d forward and on your mobile phone you should have an Android Wear app and you should, have, you should say connect with emulator and both the emulator and the mobile phone will be connected. So these are the exact steps for that. So I'm referring to the developer documentation itself so that you can always go and refer this anytime. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, thanks. Thanks for being nice audience and hope I you guys enjoyed this session. Thank you.